Hello everybody, this is a down and dirty <laughs> tour of Amsterdam, or at least part of it anyway. I'm uh, in the R22 as you can see, and this is just a bit of a relaxing flight, but one that I really wanted to get really close and personal with this scenery. And you'll see what I mean in a minute because there's so many hidden gems to look out for. Now again, I'm going to post this video 1080p 60 frames per second. I won't be able to do it for all of them, but I think videos like this in particular, I think really benefit from it. So our first port of call is this stunning structure here. There's so many churches, cathedrals, just points of interest that are just amazing. And I love how Aeroflight handles the texture work. So the, the VRAM that is that, you know, when you get a lot closer to these objects, they become bristling with detail. I never actually realized these models were as detailed as this. And you, you need to jump into a helicopter to fully appreciate it as we're doing here. Now look at this. I can see the brickwork, you know, I, I can see everything. That is just an amazing view. And in VR, the whole scale of that building is real. Uh, you know, completely one-to-one -one scale. This, I think, really, this speaks for itself. I don't really need to, uh, to kind of explain how incredible that is. I think it definitely speaks for itself. <laughs> Staggering stuff, isn't it? And, uh, like, a lot of these streets and stuff, they have, you know, purpose, uh, custom buildings with certain names and signs and Oh, it's just bristling with detail. You don't notice that when you're flying around at 30,000 feet or even in a Cessna. You need to get really ridiculously close. Like there's a square there and I can see there's a sign on that building. I can even read it. And of course, in the reverb, of course, is, is going to be even better. Uh, you're going to see everything as the developer intended to. Again, another beautiful church here. interesting how they all tell a different time <laughs> that is so detailed and, and you know flying from rooftop to rooftop in this sim in this particular region is just absolutely mind-blowing really this is all Bex at their best I, I think hopefully you can see guys that my helicopter skills are improving which is another thing that I've uh, been working on what is that some sort of like boat style cafe museum type thing I've no idea and all these barges here as well really just superbly detailed you'd never would have guessed that this there is this amount of texture work on show until you get right up close to them and see them in all their beauty and even it's like this tower block here it's like flats you can read the sign on there trade tools <laughs> and there's like a car park here as well a multi-story car park and there's actually uh, like advertisements on it in fact let's get a bit closer to that and see if we can actually read those signs Yes, you can. That says job fit. That's just amazing, isn't it? And that's just, actually, that's just a generic building. So uh, that's not even anything bespoke as such. And what we'll do is we'll find another few cathedrals, churches, whatever. And we'll go this way. But yeah, the sense of being here is uh is, is just really really amazing yeah we'll go off in this direction and see what else we can find now in case any of you are wondering i've um i've set my super sampling in error fly to 1.4 for this area because it is a little bit more taxing as you can imagine with this level of detail on my system so i've just knocked it down a little notch 
which is all that's needed really to get these uh, amazing visuals and the super sharp display of the reverb right okay we've got some more amazing scenery here on show slow down a bit remember that from last time. I think I've shown that building off before. Let's see if we can land in that bit there. As you skim these rooftops you just you just can't help but be gobsmacked by this. I feel like I could probably peep into everybody's window. Yeah, the way the uh, the sharpness is sort of handled and how things come into view as you get really close to them, the pure texture quality is there and you can see everything. Oh, this is good. Right, okay, let's go in land over here or attempt it anyway could probably land on there but uh, no what we'll do is we'll land in this little area here with a pedal turn in case you're wondering guys I'm using my CH Eclipse shake for this believe it or not works a treat wow that looks like some sort of very important building up there But yeah, I'm really getting a nice feel now for the R22. It's a joy to fly, it really is. Demands your full attention though, that's for sure. There we go. Wow, look at that. That's like some sort of government building or something. And now that I'm right up close to it, I can even see sort of the... Uh, what it looks like it's artwork on the building there we'll get we'll get even closer so you see what I mean here look at that oh, it's a sort of concert area probably amazing classical concerts have happened there over the years maybe I don't know it's not until you're literally like feet a feet away a foot away that you notice the uh, texture quality change really spectacular stuff what else can we find let's have a look and I think this is really what you need to do to really appreciate this scenery you need to get down low really slow <laughs> and just find those details Let's go over there to those skyscrapers. So here we go here, look, this is actually a Phillips building it hasn't got a helipad on the top. But yeah, I've really enjoyed sort of earning my stripes, so to speak, in the R22. This has been my the first helicopter I really feel like I've truly gelled with. And it is, in terms of uh, its flight dynamics, very, very realistic. It's interesting, you know, that many people complain about the lack of realism in Aerofly, but yet there are certain aspects to it that are better than any other sim, and that is, one thing is helicopter flying. 
and there is a new helicopter out, a Lynx Freeware uh, bird which I have downloaded and I'm going to give it a bit of a test flight at some point soon. It's so easy to uh, let the hours roll by when you've got this level of detail in a sim that is this smooth with a headset that is this sharp. Before you know it, hours have gone by and you're super chilled out. Doesn't get much slower and slower than this really. Although I say slow, we are going where well, we were going about 80 knots, slow down a little bit now. A lot of people say the R22 is unforgiving. I must admit, because I've been enjoying flying the Huey more and more as well, um, I can see what you mean actually. It's very twitchy, it's very, uh, you have to give it, you know, constantly adjust the inputs, which I suppose is what uh, helicopter flying is all about anyway. But I notice how the Huey is very, very stable. Uh, maybe it's partly to do with its hulk and momentum. Now, around where I live, I often see a helicopter really low down you hear it coming miles away to check all the pylons what a job that must be to get you know permission to fly within sort of 20 30 feet or whatever and follow the you know power grid the pylons to make sure that they're all in fact they'll probably be doing that soon because of all the terrible winds we've been having in the UK we're, we're currently getting another storm at the moment called uh, Storm Dennis and I've been flying an X-plane a little bit, messing around with that uh, storm. Don't want to get too close to that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been huge fun, really good, great, great fun. That drawbridge there, wow. Just detail everywhere. I really do feel that Aerofly is made for this type of flying. You know, VFR and uh, just VR as well. You know, it's made for just jumping in and really, really enjoying the very essence of what flying is all about. And it, it's pretty impressive to have a simulator that is this detailed this low down you know we uh, we are on the dawn of a new generation a new benchmark in flight simulator history I guess it's it's coming but it's not here yet as I've said before so this is what we've got right now and I've said it's I've said this a million times now really that once you know it's the flight simulator 2020 will, will not be my main simulator until VR is supported. So X-Plane and Aerofly will have a place on my hard drive until that very day where they implement a really good, decent VR system that works, you know, really well. And you know, I haven't actually tried the flight simulator yet. If anyone's wondering uh, whether I've actually got it, or tried it yet no I haven't I haven't been invited to the Alpha and I have a feeling part of that is due to my um, my RAM that I have I have 16 gigs of RAM and I've noticed that pretty much everyone who's been um, accepted so far has at least 32 gigs of RAM which is interesting actually in itself um, that obviously is a requirement 
and like everybody I'm itchy and I'm desperate to get my hands on it, of course I am. But it's not going to inhibit my enjoyment of what we have right now. Because look, look what we're doing right now. This is amazing, really, really impressive. The fact that we are 250 feet above the deck in VR in a 4K headset, hitting 45 frames on the button, no problems at all. In fact, I'll tell you what we'll do to finish this video. We'll go and find a P&O ferry <laughs> and see if we can land on one. There's plenty of them around. I tell you guys, we are so lucky. We take this kind of experience for granted these days. But, you know, if someone would have told me that this kind of, ex if I was like be able to be transported into the future, even from 10 years ago, I would be absolutely, it'd probably just blow my socks off. I'd be like, no way is that could be possible in 10 years from now. And we seem to be getting a bit of a fickle bunch. I mean, the flight sim community is very fussy at the best of times, but, you know, you've just got to sometimes take a step back and realise where we've come from. And we're very lucky because we're quite a niche group, really. So for any developer to take a chance and to deliver an experience like this, we've got to support them. Unfortunately, we are not mainstream. So, although I kind of like that, really. I like that we're not Xbox gamers or whatever. <laughs> although, to be fair, there's nothing wrong with gaming. I love gaming. I, at the moment, I'm going through a, a, a game called Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Absolutely loving that game. And the sheer amount of detail, the story, everything is just spectacular, really. And I think I'm... I'm only about halfway through and I'm already about 50 hours. It's just amazing value for money. So, you know, I am a gamer, don't get me wrong, but I quite like how, you know, the flight simulator genre is its own almost e evangelical kind of group of fanatics. <laughs> right, I think I can see a ferry over there. Oh, this, this is just spectacular. This is amazing. hope it's coming across okay on the video. There's actually a windsock on that there. I can see there. And I can also see with that uh, wind indicator there, which is very well modelled. It's very natural the way it moves around. But we are going into wind. So we do need to be landing into wind. If we can. Just look at the detail of these ships here. Very, very nice indeed. Right, okay, that's not a P&O ferry, but it'll do, so long as it's got a heavy pad on it somewhere. Right, steady as she goes. Let's see if we can pull this off. Screenshot there, just have to be done. Thinking a bit too fast there, you know, managed to save it. Come on, come on, get down. Oh dear. <laughs> we did it, we made it. Thanks guys for watching this tour of Amsterdam, down and dirty, with the R22. I'm now going to uh, check out this ferry and see if I can blag a three-course meal. Take care, guys. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.